SpaceX has just announced the date for the next Starship test flight. The announcement comes after the first orbital test flight ended in flames as the Starship exploded shortly after launch. In today's video, let's talk about this new announcement and how the Starship may perform. Will the craft finally be able to make it into orbit or is it destined to fail? Starship is a super heavy lift rocket and spacecraft built to carry immense cargo and numerous astronauts into deep space. The 400-foot tall stainless steel tower looms over NASA's rocket, the Space Launch System. It would take about five billboards stacked on top of the ladder to measure up to Musk's space vehicle. SpaceX estimates its rocket also has about twice as much thrust. The rocket is made of stainless steel, a material Musk is particularly fond of due to its relatively low price. Unlike NASA's Mega Moon rocket, which flies on super-chilled liquid hydrogen and oxygen, this beast is fueled with 10 million pounds of liquid methane and oxygen. The new fuel can be stored at more manageable temperatures in liquid hydrogen, meaning it doesn't need as much insulation and is less prone to leaks, a problem that often stymies NASA launches. Starship is intended to eventually evolve into a fully reusable launch and landing system designed for trips to the Moon, Mars, and other destinations. Its reusability is the holy grail of space, Musk said at a company event in South Texas in February 2022, because it will make spaceflight more affordable to the average person. Elon Musk still has big plans for SpaceX and its Starship rocket this year, despite the mega rocket exploding shortly after leaving the launch pad earlier this month. In a subscribers-only Twitter space on Saturday, the tech billionaire opened up about the shortcomings and successes of the April 20th launch. Musk said he expects SpaceX to spend about $2 billion on the Starship rocket in 2023 without raising additional funding. Musk congratulated the SpaceX team on an exciting test launch after the mega rocket exploded, writing in a tweet that he learned a lot for the next test launch in a few months. As for a timeline, Musk said there's an 80% probability that the Starship will reach orbit in 2023 and chances are even higher for the next year. At liftoff on April 20th, the 40-story Mega Rockets engine sent debris flying in the air that even made its way to a town about 5 miles away. Then, about 24 miles above the ground, the booster failed to separate, causing the rocket to fall and leaving the SpaceX team no choice but to destroy it in an explosion. An unexpected rock tornado left behind a crater and damaged the launch pad. Musk explained on Twitter that damage to the launch pad was actually quite small and assured it would be quickly repaired. Since the launch, Musk has remained optimistic about trying again in six to eight weeks since SpaceX is working on multiple Starship prototypes. He also commended his team for their hard work during the Twitter space. The majestic Starship came to an ugly end on April 20th when SpaceX's sleek, silvery, 40-story tall Starship rocket consumed itself in an orange and white fireball just four minutes after launch and 24 miles above the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Texas. As maiden voyages go, it was not pretty. In the days since, much virtual ink has been spilled, both applauding the launch and condemning its failure. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson was among the first to congratulate SpaceX. He stated that every great achievement throughout history has demanded some level of calculated risk because with great risk comes great reward. The rest of the Twitterverse wasn't as sanguine, with many people labeling the test as reckless and rushed. But whether the Starship explosion was a successful failure, as some have dubbed it, or a failure, period, the causes of the incident still have to be determined. That question must be answered soon. If SpaceX hopes to launch another Starship in anywhere close to the few months, SpaceX founder and boss Elon Musk promised in a tweet immediately after the aborted flight. Musk's tweet barely had time to go public before the Federal Aviation Administration announced it was temporarily grounding the entire Starship fleet, stating that an anomaly occurred during the ascent and prior to stage separation, resulting in a loss of the vehicle. The statement said that a return to flight of the Starship Super Heavy Vehicle is based on the FAA determining that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety. Clearing that FAA hurdle will require SpaceX to take a deep dive into the telemetry that streamed down from the Starship during its brief flight. This much is clear. Of the 33 engines that power the rocket's first stage, flight video reveals that at least eight failed to fire. 
in a February 9th static fire test, during which the engines were ignited with the rocket anchored to the ground, 31 of the 33 worked as planned. Elon Musk tweeted that the team turned off one engine just before starting and one stopped itself, so 31 engines fired overall, and these were still enough to reach orbit. That may be true when 31 engines are firing, but not a mere 25. Had the Starship's engines worked as planned last week, the first stage would have separated and fallen back to Earth at the three-minute point of the flight, leaving nine engines on the second stage to carry the rest of the spacecraft to space. Instead, it was at that point that the rocket went into an uncontrolled tumble that lasted for a full and harrowing minute. At the end of that minute, the rocket blew up. The explosion itself was no accident. In a post shortly after the flight ended, SpaceX announced that its Flight Turbination System, or FTS, essentially a self-destruct mechanism to prevent danger to people or structures on the ground, destroyed both stages of the rocket. The company did not reveal whether the FTS was triggered automatically by the out-of-control tumbling or whether it was manually activated from the ground. Starship is not remotely alone in being equipped with an FTS. Indeed, the FAA requires a system in all rockets before it allows them to fly. The loss of the rocket itself was not the only harm done that day. The launch pad suffered serious damage as bowling ball-sized chunks of concrete were broken loose and flung up out from the force of the engines that did ignite. As the New York Times, Texas Public Radio, and others reported, in Port Isabel, Texas, a city six miles from SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site, buildings shook, at least one window shattered, and a cloud of sandy debris rained down on the residents and their homes. SpaceX is not pretending that solutions to all the problems that arose on April 20th will come soon, and after-action reports and repairs like the one the company is faced with are typically slow, painstaking affairs. Many are asking why didn't the Starship, second stage, separate as planned? Why did a few engines fail on the booster phase? What will be done to mitigate launch area damage on future missions? All good questions, and there are others too. The second stage of the rocket didn't even get a chance to try flying, after all, so there is no way of knowing yet if there are design flaws buried within it that will be revealed only on subsequent tests after the problems in the first stage are worked out. And if 25 engines can do the kind of damage they did to Port Isabel, what will happen when the full complement of 33 does successfully light in tandem? Especially since even with just a portion of its engines burning, Starship's April 20th flight still made it the most powerful rocket ever launched. For now, SpaceX is keeping its head down, trying to solve its problems, make its repairs, and satisfy the FAA, which holds the ultimate leash on future Starship flights. There are many who continue to believe the company has the wherewithal to do that, and that Starship has a bright future. SpaceX had launched a handful of test flights from Starbase before this, but those previous efforts were a different breed. They got nowhere near space, involved only upper stage spacecraft, and featured a maximum of three Raptor engines. And it had been a while since we'd seen one of these flights. A Starship prototype last launched in May 2021, sticking its landing after soaring about six miles into the South Texas sky. Ever since that three-engine success, SpaceX has been gearing up for the next big step in the Starship test program, the first space launch, which would feature an integrated Starship Super Heavy stack for the first time. And that's what we saw on the 20th. The relatively long lead-up to this test flight wasn't attributable merely to the challenges of technological development. There were regulatory hurdles, too. For example, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration reviewed SpaceX's application for a Starship near-orbital launch license for more than 500 days before finally granting it on Friday, April 14th. As part of this process, the FAA conducted an in-depth environmental review of activities at Starbase, instructing SpaceX to perform more than 75 mitigating actions to minimize the impact on the surrounding ecosystem, which is incredibly biodiverse. We should expect SpaceX to fly Starship again relatively soon. The company has multiple Starship vehicles in production at Starbase, and the plan is to fly them pretty much as soon as they're ready. That's in keeping with Musk's philosophy, which prioritizes the advances gained from flight tests, even those that fail. If the test campaign goes well, people could climb aboard Starship for the first time just a few short years from now. NASA selected Starship to be the first crewed lander for its Artemis moon program, for example. The SpaceX vehicle will put astronauts down near the lunar south pole on the Artemis 3 mission, which is targeted to launch in 2025 or thereabouts. 
SpaceX has already sold two private around-the-moon Starship missions as well. One was booked by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa, who will fly with a crew of eight artists and influencers. Dennis Tito, who paid his own way to the International Space Station back in 2001, will fly on the other Starship Moon mission along with his wife Akiko and other passengers whose identities have not yet been disclosed. Target launch dates for those two private moon missions have not yet been announced, but they and all of Starship's other envisioned future flights are a little closer to reality now that the huge vehicle has actually gotten off the ground. The Starship has the ability to carry up to 100 passengers to the moon, Mars, and beyond, giving people the opportunity to experience space travel in a whole new way. With its comfortable cabin and advanced life support systems, the Starship is the perfect vehicle for space tourism. And with its powerful engines and efficient fuel system, it can carry out long-duration missions with minimal interruption. Space tourism is a relatively new concept and has only become possible in recent years due to advancements in technology. In the past, only astronauts and professional space travelers had the opportunity to experience the thrill of space travel. But now, with companies like SpaceX offering private missions to space, the dream of space travel is becoming a reality for more and more people. Space tourism offers many benefits both for the individual traveler and for society as a whole. For the individual, it offers the chance to experience a once-in-a-lifetime adventure and the opportunity to see our planet from a completely new perspective. For society, it provides a new source of revenue and jobs and helps to advance the field of space exploration. While being able to travel to space is an interesting prospect, it's not without its challenges. For one, it's an extremely expensive endeavor, with private missions costing millions of dollars. In addition, there are still many technical and safety concerns that need to be addressed, such as the effects of long-term exposure to zero gravity on the human body. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about the ULA rocket and how it exploded at the launch pad. Do you think the Starship can reach orbit this year? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.